Oh, good. I think this will work. Yeah. <laughs> you know, you'll find out. You'll find out when you get the file. Yeah, famous last words. Yeah. Get my um, notes. All right. Ah, and the cops are here. And the cops, and the cops are arriving. I'm Fantastic. just, I'm just hoping the landscapers don't arrive because I don't, I don't know what day they come yet over here. You know what? I'm so rusty. I don't know what's going on. I'm, I feel like a deer in the headlights. Um, yeah, we. It's been a while. Sorry, I missed last month. No, it's cool. It's fine. It's fine. Um, right. I'll do the intro. Go. Okay. Hi guys, and welcome. Finally, to the next show. Uh, it's been a while. I'm joined once again by my partner in crime. <laughs> hey, how you doing? I'm okay. How are you? Good. I, I think the delay was probably all my fault at this point. Um, yeah, moved. Did, yeah. It's been it, it, when we talked about you know getting together. I was like, yeah, I could. I'll come down and see you in July. And then I looked at the calendar. I was like, oh my. Goodness, I can't come down. I can't leave. I can't move. So yeah. So sorry about that. So it's absolutely fine. I'll visit um, you soon. Nice. Good. Uh, yeah. I've, I've I've missed you. It's it's, it's quite strange. I feel smiling face. Kind of, yeah, <laughs> discombobulated. I'm out of uh, you know out. Of You're out of sorts. Yeah, I don't worry about it. You're. It's good to see you. We'll yeah. we'll pick up like like riding a bicycle. Perfect. Perfect, and uh, I'm loving the new setup. Congrats, Thank you. by the way. Thank you, and this is your, you know, this is your help as well to get this to actually function and not be just totally overexposed. I have aluminum flashing tape. I took the light bulbs out and I wrapped them up and stuff. And uh, nice. The so Geocron is good. I love this thing. Very cool. Yeah. Very cool. So you got the full scope of horology there. Yeah? I do. I do. I'm thinking of maybe putting another shelf underneath. I have some other stuff that I could land there i've got nice pyramid clocks and stuff before you know it, it'll be chaos like it is over yeah yeah no i, <laughs> I don't want... <laughs> this is like my zen area i'm trying to keep it quiet nice nice the complete antithesis of me yes exactly yeah i uh, know that's fine i'm gonna have to come visit you yes as well, absolutely um because i've got to see this in, in love, love this. to have you it's not only just the new set, it's for oh, no, recording it's, for, it's, uh... it's there's i'm now in almost five thousand square feet Oh wow. yeah, and like three thousand of that is literally just watches. Wow. Yeah. That that's ah. I yeah. Can't wait. I love it. It's awesome. Congratulations. Thank you. Well Thank deserved. You. Appreciate it. Thank you. Appreciate it. Should we start with a a, a, a t-shirt check? Because. Uh... Oh sure. It's funny when I so. I'd rather be flying. So it, this is my new venture. I started um, uh, PPL, uh, private pilot's license uh, wow. classes, about two months ago or so. Yeah, wow. yeah, about six, seven weeks ago. I've already flown for like seven or eight hours, and uh, yeah, it's always a, it's it's a dream of mine. It's always been something I've wanted to do, and I'm finally finally realizing it, and uh, I love it. That's I amazing. It. Congrats. Yeah. Thank wow. you, thank you. Lots so, for those of you who missed the previous episodes, uh, you were used to work in aero... Air, aerospace. Aerospace. Military right. defense contractor. Right. I've always just been a big fan of aviation, even as a kid. Planes and stuff. Loved go, getting on planes and flying places and, you know, vacations, whatever. Just so, to finally, like... Actually pilot one. Yeah. Yeah, yeah that's yeah. amazing. Student, student, student pilot right now. But yeah, it's... um. It's it's a harrowing experience. I'm sure a lot of like <laughs> you know whatever I talk about, a lot of people comment out in you know either Instagram or YouTube that they are pilots and they talk about it and they love yeah, it and it's yeah, just yeah, so yeah. I know there's a lot of people out there that do it and love it. So and it's just I don't know, it's really cool. I'm fully fully enjoying it. It's very expensive, but I'm fully enjoying it. I can imagine. It's like getting a new watch like every week. It's kind oh of like my, what it is. Oh my god. Yeah. Is it like an addiction like watches? I would imagine. Yeah, it, can, it could be, yeah, because there's like no end in sight, to, you know, depending on what you want to do. Right, You know, right. what you want to do with it. I don't want to do much. I just want to be able to go up and fly around the little single engine putt around. Um, but yeah, if you really want to go balls to the wall, you can. 
Nice, nice. Aviation chat with Mark and TJ. Yeah, so go ahead. So what are you, <laughs> yes. what are you, sport, what are you sporting today? Um, well, as it's a new tea uh, that I've put nice. out. Nice. Very, very simple. I just, you know what I realized? Um, you've got to take ownership yes. of, of, the, of sure. the thing. So yeah, like, that, 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 that's your deal, man. It's in the store. It will be down ah, below. Ah, cool. So, Link yeah. below. Link below. <laughs> and wristwatch check. So. Oh, sure. So uh, I'll start with my new release and I'll send you some better footage. I'm wearing my Northport. Uh, oh, wow. It's a turquoise uh, ripple dial. It kind of looks like a swimming pool. Nice. Um, oh, the ocean. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's so it's my newest Islander release. Um, it's got a Miyota 1915 in it. It's just a, a really nice, cool summer watch. And then perfect. I'm wearing my Ooh. UN Maxi Marine. The OG. I think chronometer. That's, that's one of the first watches of yours I ever saw. I believe that is correct. So yeah. uh, this. Let's see. This is. Um, I know the year I got it. I got it in the beginning of 12. So wow, this watch is over a decade old at this point. Very cool, very That's cool. That's insane. All blue, all blue today. Of course. Nice. I'm wearing the Dan Henry uh, 1972. I'm still in the kind of Top Gun mode, so the Maverick, so there we go. I assume are. you saw the movie. I haven't. I've, oh, I'm, I haven't. I'm in two minds to go and see it. Mm? I'm probably just gonna blind buy it on, on Blu-ray and then just see it on my big telly at home. Got it. You know, because then okay. I can rewatch it, rewatch it. Um, Understood. Anyway, yeah. So, what are we talking about today? Um, well, when I propose this to you, <laughs> things have already changed by the time I, I, we came up with the list yeah. and recording this. Uh, yes. Of course, Tudor's put out something which kind of, uh, I don't know. We'll talk, we'll would you say fortuitous? Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, Silently between you and I? Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, it's watches we want to be, we want to see reissued, basically. Yeah. So mm -hmm. it's it can be anything. Would you like to go first? If you'd like to have me, yes, I would love to. Please do. Um, so I guess it, it's really in no particular order. Um, I'm not really a vintage guy myself, so it's kind of tough for me sometimes to really mm -hmm. reach back into time. But mm -hmm. I, I think of what speaks to me: the Seiko Bullhead, mm -hmm. um, and it's such an iconic-looking watch. Citizen actually brought the bullhead back a couple of years ago, right? Um, not long ago. Um, but so I'm going to Seiko bullhead because I think Seiko could really do. Seiko really seems to be in the reinvention phase, right? Mm -hmm. Like the Arnie came back and the '62 Moss came back, and mm -hmm. they love br the the, tur the new Turtle, which was released like you know six years ago. That came yeah. back. Yeah. It seems like recycling old stuff. So they should bring the bullhead back. Uh, yeah. So the bullhead, I'm sure everybody knows it, right? Um, yeah. It's based on their 6138 caliber, which is a follow-on from the 6139, which is in the Pogue, which I'll talk about, which I'll talk about later. Yeah, yeah. Uh, spoilers. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, but it, it came in uh, brown and black, uh, but it was a large watch. Whereas the Citizen one was kind of smaller because Citizen uh -huh. used a smaller caliber. Um, this was a 44 millimeter watch, so really kind of chunky. 44 on the diameter, 45 on the lug tip to lug tip, 16 thick. Jesus. Man. Yeah. Um, came out, I know we discussed this briefly, you know, who, yeah. who, who made it first. It, yeah. It kind of like, it's kind of tough to say because it's not, there's, I don't think there's a real winner of who came out first. Is it a bit like, you know, that a famous argument of who did the first automatic chronograph? And some people right. say Seiko, some people right. say Zenith. No, right. the, the Swiss were all trying to gang up on Seiko together. There was like a right. joint Right, to, to beat them out of the game, venture. right. Yeah. And, you know, it's almost like um, you if you look back, there's bullheads by, um, was it Omega had a so Omega yeah, had a bullhead? Yeah, they had a bullhead, uh, yeah. A famous one, yeah. So a lot of them did, and a lot of them dates back to like the, you know, early 70s kind of. So, yeah. um, but I think even more importantly is that the, the movement that they used in it, the 6138, had a column wheel and vertical coupling, mm. which the Daytona, when Rolex made their own movement, they took that same technology. They were the, so Seiko was the first one to do it. They mm. took that same tech and put it into their own in-house caliber. Mm. Um, you know, for the Daytona, which obviously is a very, you know, robust and to the test of time movement. So I think, again, it's another testament just to all the stuff that Seiko has done over the years mm. as far as ingenuity. And I guess I just have to segue quickly into 
the GMT that they just came out with in the Seiko oh, 5 right, collection. Right, 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 right. Yeah. Because again, another, I don't want to say a first, because people have been making GMT movements, you know, for a while, but they did it affordably. Right. And I already saw one rip down, and it's actually, I'm sorry, I'm really segueing. Yeah, yeah. But it's, it's the day indicator from a 4R36 that they kind of repurposed into a clicking hour hand. And it's just, in, it's ingenious. Because if you think about it, the, mm. um, the, the day wheel revolves once a week, they need a hand that revolves once a day. So like a seven to one gear ratio and you've got an hour hand. So it, it uses a lot of the same parts as the four or three. Okay, I'm sorry. Anyway. No, 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 it's fine. I'm gonna talk about that gym. <laughs> oh, later. okay, so yeah. I'm sorry. No, no, uh, so no. I'll get back into mine. So the bullhead, you know, it, so it looks like, right, it looks like a, a stopwatch, right? Yeah, uh, yeah. On a strap and then they make a cutaway in at the 12 o'clock. Um, for the crown, and they say it was to prevent accidental activation of the chrono. I guess by your um, by flexing your wrist, because mm -hmm. I mean I don't know if I've ever actually done that with a chrono with my own wrist, but I've done that with push crown watches like the the Aerospace, the Breitling. I've mm -hmm. I've accidentally activated the chrono or the alarm just by bending my wrist. So that's why they did it. Um, but I really think they should bring that watch back. The problem is if they bring it back, what's it coming back? How powered by what? Is it be powered right. by an NE88? Yeah. You know, that's, I, mean, I don't know. It's, it's going to be gonna expensive. Make, yeah. It's going to be an expensive watch. These were not expensive watches when they came out. Um, and you can still find them online, though. I guess, much like the Pogue, you have to be careful of Franken parts and mm. all these other things. But um, mm. yeah, so uh, the Bullhead is something I would love to see. Maybe in a Mecha Quartz. I don't know. Something cool that they can bring back for. Uh, yeah. for themselves the yeah. next thing hey maybe they're already doing it Who you know it's funny you mentioned the that that uh is it the ne88 is the ne88 yeah. yeah that's but their that's their chrono movement auto did, chrono right they did a a very limited uh automatic flight master with that and it was did they really yeah it was really high end okay and i've only ever seen a few pictures i know it exists yeah and oh god I, now i'm thinking well why didn't i say that but then again like yeah. <laughs> I think you just answered it. It, it was it was too high end, and, right? You know, yeah. I, anything with an any eighty eight is generally over two grand usually. Yeah. Nice choice. Um, Thank you. I asked you when you nominated you, when you put forth your nomination. Right. I said, so do you know who did it first? And because I actually discussed the, the citizen fairly recently, was, um, oh, okay. With the the, the last. Tarantino movie, Brad Pitt wore the vintage, I think it was a vintage um, Citizen bullhead. Okay. Mm -hmm. And Citizen have got some really nice ones. For sure. Yeah, so who would you put your money on if, if you had Seiko. to? Seiko. Yeah, you think they did it first? Yeah, yeah, that's who I would guess. Um, you know, simply because they had the mechanical chrono already going. The 6139 came, was late 60s, mm -hmm. right? And the 38 just 30 would have added a third register. I think that was about it. That was kind of the differences. Um, but yeah, I would probably say Seiko. But Citizens is certainly more svelte. The Seiko is not only big, mm. it's very asymmetrical. When you look at it, the lugs, the lugs are asymmetrical. The thickness of the case from top, from lug to lug is asymmetrical it's a it's i guess it's almost like a designer's worst nightmare right, right, it probably yeah. gives people the the heebie-jeebies yeah but yeah um i would say they did it first but i'm no horological expert yeah it's, uh citizen got round the 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 mechanical issues by they whacked a um, you know an eco drive yeah well it's easy yeah which is what they pretty much do like uh like that new uh I don't want to bring it up, but that uh, that Miele watch that came out, that super thin automatic. Oh, I saw something about that. What what was what was the deal with that? It's so it's the world's again after like I guess Piaget, and they now have the world's thinnest mechanical wristwatch. It's a few million dollars or something. That's ridiculous. I, I mean, I, I forget how thick it is. One millimeter, one point one millimeter, or something like that. It's not who I would have expected to do that. No, especially it's like the antithesis of everything they stand for. I know. <laughs> well, maybe they're trying to. God, you, I hope they haven't seen my uh, my, oh. <laughs> my views on them. On, on well, are, are, they, are they aiming to be a sponsor? I won't worry about it. No, <laughs> <laughs> no. It's a, a competition that 
really goes back to like classical watchmaking of you know right. dress watches. And, right. Who can make it the slimmest, the thinnest, the smallest? Yeah. yeah. Absolutely. So bizarre. Anyway, yeah, tangents abound. Yeah, yeah. Today. Go ahead. What's, um, what, what's your number one? Okay, so I I was going to say Tudor, and okay. when I when I first um, wrote this down, this new Tudor Ranger hadn't come out right, and right. Um, I just want to point out to everybody, Tudor started putting a T Rex in their advertising, right? And Did they really? Yeah. Yeah. I don't <laughs> see you like like you don't <laughs> go down to the affordables level much. I don't. <laughs> Hey, yeah. some, somebody tagged me in t okay. Hugo's Instagram because <laughs> Hugo has an Instagram as well. Right. And and so Hugo saw it and he uh, he kind of mocked them. By, by I think oh, he was fairly annoyed because it's like, well, if you're going to hire a dinosaur, you might as well. Who? Of course. Who what else? else could you get? Yeah. So they hired some, I don't know, this, yeah, upstart. Some other bit actor. actor. <laughs> yeah. Some other. Anyway, so... so <laughs> <laughs> wait, wait, what was that? Go back a minute. Landscape, water, plants, T Rex. Time to head back home, maybe. What on earth is so, going on? Your world. Boring takes time. Shooter. Born to dare. With dinosaurs. So that was weird. And then, and then of course, about, I think about a month ago, I said, oh, I'd really like my reaction to, I, I, I was talking about the, the, the Black Bay Krona and I was like, right. I was like, oh, I'm kind of a bit sick of more Black Bays, more everything, right. Black Bay, Black Bay. They're great. I love the 58s, fantastic. You know, I have a Submariner Tudor. I love, you know, they have a rich heritage, blah, 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 blah. I, you know, I've talked to death about it. But I said, you know, why not bring the Ranger back? You know, it's got a really great history. So you, you this is what you were thinking? Yeah. That's crazy. <laughs> right. Seriously? So that, yeah, and then they did it. And, and, and I was like, of course they did. And I've noticed, I've noticed a pattern, right? Go ahead. So what they do, before they bring out a new watch, they make the, other one, the older one kind of disappear off their website. Got it. So I, for this video, I was going to nominate the chronograph, the, um, okay. not the, not the um, Black Bay chrono, right. the Monte Carlo, okay, okay. The, uh, very that. 1970s, I think it ran from um, 71 to 76, then they brought it back, then they had the big blocks from 76 to 1991, including a Tiger, I used to own one, and then Got in it. the 2000s, they had the Fast Rider with those Ducati red, black colors, and then the Black Shield. The Black Shield and Fast Rider completely disappeared off their website. I can't find any mention on it. Okay, so this is your... Uh, yeah, so this is now, now I'm... This I'm, is your foreshadowing, so you yeah. better edit this and get this out. <laughs> yeah, so I'm, I'm, I'm predicting that they will either bring back the Monte Carlo with the new in-house... Uh, okay. Uh, Canessi or Canessi, whatever them... Because, you know, they, ha they started their own movement manufacturing. Yes. And, and they supply Fortis, uh, I think, is it Breitling? A whole bunch of other people. Mm -hmm. Norquin, I think, is another one. I think they're going to bring back. I, ideally, I'd love to see the big block because it's very Daytona-esque. Right. But I love the Monte Carlo because it's got this 70s fun colors. There's, you probably like the, 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 yeah. the, the blue one. It's kind of sexy. Uh, yeah, I'm looking at it right I'm looking at it right now. Right, yeah. Um, and they have a great history that of chronographs going not as far back as the daytona but they were f famously worn by rally drivers in the 70s mm -hmm. and if yeah. you know rally it's yep. it's a tough sport it's yeah, not sure. a, it's not a smooth road so you've no. got lots of vibration and all of that stuff which is a nightmare for a chronograph so it's like right. perfection Let, let's do that interestingly talking of top gun tom cruise wore uh one of the newer monte carlos the last ones the last generation um, in one of the Mission Impossible movies. Oh, okay. And he's a big motorcycle fan. Right. I don't know if that was his choice because it, there's no mention of it being, you know, ambassador or sponsorship. Right, or, or a anything sponsorship like or anything. Maybe that yeah. was too expensive. Yeah. I mean, who's who can afford Tom Cruise to right. be an ambassador? You know. Right. So I, I'm like, I'm kind of think it's his, it's his watch. But anyway, 
Um, so, there we have it. My prediction, Tudor. I know, I love this. So this just turned into watches we'd like to see re released to Nostradamus. Yeah. <laughs> I like it. Okay. Um, you know, I'm just, I'm just going to say, go right into it since we, I already hit Seiko and I already kind of talked about it. I, I think they should really bring back. Oh, I'm sorry. Are we? No, I'm sorry. Look, swag. Product placement. <laughs> yeah. Is that, is that vodka or is that water? No. Oh God, no. It's, it's too early for vodka. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's only 1130. We've got another half oh, hour. It's 1130 in Philly also? <laughs> Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Let me check the Geocron. Oh, yes, yeah. it is. <laughs> nice. Oh, you're coming up on uh, noon soon. Very nice. Yeah. Uh, then I'm, it will so be the, vodka. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm going to go with the Pogue. Uh, nice. Just because nice. I know it's a watch that I've discussed numerous times. But again, in, in that same vein of them bringing back a lot of different watches, I think this one obviously has the same issue about movement with they pop in it. Um, but maybe not even. I use the term Pogue just to represent that design and shape of a chronograph, not necessarily uh, the golden dial. Right, the Pogue right, is right. the golden dial with the red and blue bezel, but I really think that they can do well to reissue. Again, maybe it's with a Mecca Quartz or something else so mm. they can kind of bring, you know, keep the price affordable. Um, mm. But yeah, I think something with, uh, you know, center seconds, uh, six o'clock, 30 minute register, with the tachometer, it doesn't have to have the snazzy crown because the real one, it's got the crown, right? You push it to change that, the That day would be a day. shame though, because yeah, that's, they, that's so cool. I don't cool. know how they could do that. You really need a lot of linkages inside. Mm. Um, I think that's a watch that, that will get snapped up by everyone. Like, yeah. there's so many people that are so ingrained in Seiko history yeah. and they just love to own the older stuff. I think they would make a killing if they did something. You wouldn't have to make it limited, just make it and mm. sell it and then they sell the crap out of it. Yeah, I agree, I agree. It's it's such a like a, an iconic watch for them. Yeah. And it's I love the way it stands on its own because of those interesting use of gold and blue and yes, red and for sure. Uh, and there are other colorways. Um, yeah, I have the blue one. I have a blue one. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah, yeah it's, I'm surprised they haven't done that. I every year I'm like, "Oh, they do, what are they do. doing this year? And yeah. They seem, they're very heavy on, I mean, obviously, because of their rich dive heritage, they're very heavy on dive um, reissues. That's kind of, it seems like where they've just been for the last, let's say, decade. They've yeah. kind of been in the dive watch reissue thing. Um, but I really think they can make a smash with that. And who knows, mate, you know, obviously they know what sells. They know, mm. they know what will sell. Mm. So, you know, maybe that's something that they're working on. If they do do it, They'll do a high-end limited edition with, mechanical. and then they'll make a, and they'll make one for the plebs. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> with so, it would be solar or like you said, you know. Yeah, like well, a, they're they're really shying away from solar in the lower cost watches. Um, oh, and that's I've right. discussed this on your channel before. Yes, it's, I'm so sorry. You yes. will not find solar unless it's a Paddy or a Prospex. Um, it's almost like they're seeding market dominance to. To, to, I, th I think you know that's a really that's a really wise way to put it. I kind of feel that that's the way because mostly in America, Citizen is known for Echo Eco Drive, yeah, whatever you want to call it. Um, but now I know Citizen. I've seen there's some kind of new ProMaster Diver they released, and I think it's even yeah. stateside and automatic. Again, I, if I don't carry it, I kind of don't know about it too much. But yeah. Segway of the century because oh. Citizen's next for me. Oh, so go ahead. You can, yeah. you know what? That, that's it for me. So you can roll right into it. Nice. Please. Yeah, I was going to say the Citizen Eagle 7, which. I got to look. I got to look that up. It's a, it's a day date or date, uh, date just kind of homage from the 80s. And I, mean, I can't, I, I don't actually know much about it because the, it's kind of long forgotten. And you can get it. get it in various different ways. Um, fluted bezel, not you know, jubilee. It, it, it's obvious what it is, right? But this is from when the uh, citizen was still okay, doing it. automatics, and it's a very. I think Eagle Eagle Seven was there. I'm guessing, judge, judging by the, 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 the had a beautiful applied logo. I used to own right. one, in fact. I see it. Yeah. Okay. I'll, I'll tell you the little, quick little story behind it. 36 millimeters is it, it's perfect, and I I bought one when I was living in Italy. I bought it from a jeweler's opposite the Duomo, the big cathedral, uh, okay. Bruno Leschi's masterpiece, uh, Renaissance masterpiece. It's the shop was off opposite, and mm -hmm. today I think the Panerai boutiques there. 
Oh, interesting. So, yeah, because Panerai, obviously, from Florence originally, mm -hmm. so, you know, they're flagship sure. store. Um, and there's quite a few little interesting kind of horologically related stories in that because the Duomo has the, a clock that... Uh, I'm not going to get into that because nobody cares about Renaissance horological history. But anyway, <laughs> so, uh, aside from me... I can't even say it. Yeah. <laughs> so... Um, Actually, Panerai funded the, the, the restoration of that clock, which interesting. is really interesting. Anyway, so I brought in I brought in this little Rico that I I bought. This uh, this is Japanese made in house. They make photocopies now, but at one point they were the second largest maker of mechanical watches in Japan. Rico? Yeah. Really? Yeah, I did a I, I did a deep dive video when I scored this little new old stock. That's really interesting. Did and, not know that. Yeah, actually, check out that video, Mark, because the um, the mechanism is fairly interesting. It's got okay. this to change the date. You pull out the crown, and it flips it forward. Oh, I got it. So it's yeah. like the reverse of the Seiko where you pushed it in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's so Rico, the photocopy machine, photocopied the date just. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Actually, this is a day date. Oh, did, oh, look at that. even better. Yeah. So without this, precious metals. Yeah, exactly. It's it's a cracking little watch. Anyway, I'm obsessed with 36 millimeter sure. watches like that. When I bought this watch, I was a student. I was there studying, mm -hmm. and um, I didn't know anything about watches. I mean, I'm not like what well, I know a little bit more now, but right. I selected it because I like the size, I like the mm -hmm. style. I didn't know what a Rolex date just was or a right. president or anything. I just liked right. it. I like it. It came on a fluted bezel with a jubilee bracelet. Mm -hmm. And I only just remembered it a couple of days ago. I lost it. I don't know what happened to it. Oh. It's really a shame because it was, I, I loved that watch. But I think the seed was planted that I already liked the Jubilee and that Rolex style before I even knew it Got was it. Rolex. Ah. So, yeah, I, I, they're never going to bring it back because it's, they're not doing automatics like that. I, that saying right. that, you did mention earlier, they're kind of bringing some divers. Right, right. Yeah. But they're not going to, you know what? Honestly, I think, I wanted to say two things. You, you well, number one, you kind of, looks like the Orient Three Star President watches. Right, yeah, yeah. Right, yeah. that's kind of what it reminds me of, which would be yeah. a great thing for Orient to bring back. Yeah. Um, but the second thing I was going to say is, I don't think they want to poop on Rolex's designs. Mm. Um, I, I think that's a sticky point because one of my watches I was going to nominate was the Orient 2ER0001B and 2D, which was their How on earth little... do you remember that? I just don't know. What's that? How on earth do you remember that? I just don't know. It's 3,000 square feet of part numbers <laughs> and I know, I know most of them. Um, and it, it's their little, it was their, it was their Submariner. Right. It was like 140 bucks. And I was like, wow, that's a watch they should bring back. But I have a feeling they quashed it originally just because of, eh, yeah, you know, yeah, yeah, they're a little yeah. scared in the marketplace. But that's yeah. a really cool looking watch. I had yeah. no idea it even existed. The, the name is kind of weird. Yeah, Eagle, Eagle 7. Eagle 7, don't you think? Pilot the moon, Or the moon? Like the eagle, the eagle has landed. Oh yeah, of course. I mean, Eagle Seven come in, or I don't yeah. think it was Eagle Seven, but I'm just saying, you know. I have a sneaking suspicion they were trying to do the Seiko Five thing. Oh, okay. So yeah. this, so this, this added two more things. Yeah, to it's it. like we're two, we're a little bit better, like. <laughs> oh wait, I did that backwards. We two, yeah, sorry. Yeah, no, it's fine. It's fine. Yeah, there's not much more to say. Just I, learned, I, I just I, learned something. I had no idea that even existed. Cool. Cool. Wow. That's that's cool. Um, yeah, it's it's a sentimental thing for me, and and I I've only just realized why I'm so obsessed with right 36 fluted bezels and jubilee bracelets. So what is next for you? So my third one. <laughs> This is funny because I, I gave you the wrong name originally. And I'm like, why the hell did I even write that? Uh, I wanted to go back to, Zo I want to go to Zodiac. Yeah. Because I know they were kind of also reinventing, right? The Sea Wolf and they're reinventing a lot of a lot of styles. Um, there's a watch, I guess it's lesser known. It's called the King Line. And it was the King Line 36,000. And 36,000 meaning beats per hour. Uh. I thought what was really cool about this is that there's not many brands obviously that made you know, a, uh, a five hertz watch, you know, 10, 10 ticks a second. Right. But this was affordable, like super affordable, like under like 500 bucks affordable. And when was this? So this is in the 70s. And this was, 
the watch was a collaboration between, I had to write the names down, Doxa, uh -huh. Eberhard, uh -huh. uh, GP or you know Gerard Perigo and, and Zodiac themselves. Wow. And the whole movement was a collaborative effort. And they somehow produced this 10 hertz movement that was affordable. The watches themselves are just, I, I guess vintage watches eventually also are, all start to look the same. Yeah, you know, yeah, sub 40 yeah. cases, you know, brushed silver dials, cool indices, cool hands, a frame date window, blah, 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 blah. Mm -hmm. But to me, it was that movement. I mean, that movement, who uh, knows, maybe, right. you know, I know I've dealt with other brands like Seagull, for example, they go into the archives and they find that there's 5,000 movements from 1965 that, you know, just sitting there and they can clean them and redo them. Yeah. Maybe Zodiac's got a room somewhere where there's like a thousand movements uh. and they can just rip them <laughs> apart, clean them, and put them back together and That'd offer be this. Because who makes a five hertz watch now except for, yeah. you know, the really expensive guys? Yeah. You know, you, you, you Seiko, Zenith, your Zenith, and, and yeah. those look like the two that are kind of known to do it. Yeah. Um, so I thought this was uh, just I'd a nice. I've never heard of this. I'm extraordinary. Yeah, it was so, really um, a cool find. Why did they team? I pre okay, I presume they teamed up to, because of resources. Yeah, right? of course. Yes. But what what was their goal? Like they to produce they a lower cost five hertz watch. I think the Seiko was starting to get into that market as well, or you know, starting to engineer and look into the the higher beat movement. Right. And I and it's it's interesting because it's a very it's. It's not schlubby players. I mean, these are we're talking yeah, Doxa, it's big boys. Yeah. Eberhard, you know, yeah. who was big at the time, and I, yeah. I don't know that big anymore. GP, who obviously is still around doing high amazing tech. stuff. Yeah, um, and Zodiac, which I guess you know, I don't think of them as kind of high tech now, but they're just making pretty cool watches. I, uh, it's just a um. I don't know, kind of a melding of the minds, as it were, to get right. this thing off the ground. Like I said, you know, I, I looked on eBay, and you can find them for a couple hundred bucks. Wow. In in various degrees of disrepair or whatever, but yeah. you know, even under a thousand and they're fully functioning. So I presume they lost that rivalry. I guess they did. We never because, heard. <laughs> you know, did they lose the rivalry or is it a market that's not even important? Right. Because for Zenith, I understand it. I understand yeah. it. I mean, of course, you know, the accuracy of the chrono is only as accurate as the movement itself, but 10 hertz is cool. Um, but they weren't chronos, they're three-handed watches. Yeah, there's a point with the chrono. Uh, chrono there's a point with it, I get it, because yeah. you can put, now I can put five ticks and I can get, you know, more accuracy. I can get, you know, tenths of a second, so that's cool. But with a wristwatch, I don't know. You know, Accutron came out and then they, you know, smooth sweep and, right, you know, there's, right. there's a fineness, there's, there's, there's a limit to your smoothness, right? Yeah. So yeah, I think yeah, anything, yeah. I mean, you know, eight hertz is, is pretty damn smooth, yeah. right? I mean, yeah. it really is, so. Maybe 10 hertz isn't necessary. In the long run, aside from it, you know, looking nice on a, on a three-hander, mm -hmm. it's going to be more friction on all the moving yeah. parts. Yeah, higher, higher maintenance. More, higher maintenance. Higher maintenance, yeah, sure. It's, you know, 20 or 25% more beats every second yeah. than it should, you know, than, than a, a lower beat watch has. So maybe it's got to be serviced more often, sure. It's, it must have been like a marketing thing, like saying, oh, smooth is sweet. Or, you know. Yeah, uh, but they made them in chronometer versions and, you know, right. so they did, yeah, they did a cool, cool nice. job. But it's interesting that I believe that only Zodiac used I think only Zodiac used the movement. I'm not entirely sure. Again, you know, like you had just said with the um, with the Citizen watch, with the Eagle Seven, you couldn't find much. I couldn't find much. I just yeah. knew this watch existed. Yeah. But then, you know, usually you find like great, you know, great history, and you go to the company's website and read about history and stuff. Yeah, you nothing. Find much here. Nothing. That's a shame. Yeah, guys, if anybody knows about this uh, interesting Zodiac or the Citizen uh, Eagle nah, Seven. Uh, please do add in the comments. There's, there's always I find with like these kind of niche, you know, brands like Zodiac. Yeah. Uh, um, and um, Actron is another one which I'll right. talk about in a, in a moment. Um, there's always like kind of cult like followings that just yes. and you'll see them in the comments like yeah, they sure. know everything. Yeah. You know, and I, I love that kind of stuff, uh, especially when they turn it into like a devoted website blog right and then they used to kind of you know yeah. kind of can write about it like like dan henry kind of did right exa exactly exactly right exactly yeah sorry uh, no that's perfect <laughs> i might as well go with my next one because it is below uh, but it's actually the actron 
side of it. You mentioned the new Seiko earlier with the GMT. I apologize, yeah. guys, about the sound. Um, no, I debuted on the channel a new Citizen Movement. First mm -hmm. time ever seen in video on YouTube. They were kind enough to lend it to me. And so, Citizen own Actron, they own Blover now, mm -hmm. blah, blah, blah. I said in the video, I was a bit disappointed. You know, I, maybe I was a bit, a bit critical. I had to be fair. Right. I felt it was a missed opportunity because they're sitting on this legacy of the, they, they, they own the rights of the Belova, um, at the astronaut back in the day, right? Mm -hmm. Amazing watch, GMT, right? Um, worn by the spy plane, the A-12 spy plane pilots, you know, those supersonic, mm -hmm. um, crazy, I was, I fell down a rabbit hole read, just reading about the planes. Yeah, I made out of, t out of titanium because yeah, was, that was the precursor, right, to the SR seventy one. Insane planes. That was behind closed doors. Publicly, they were worn by the X fifteen hypersonic astronauts. Okay. Um, and they and Belova used them in their advertising. Really, really cool. And they were the absolute pinnacle of the Actron, the old uh, tuning fork uh, movements. Got it. The two one four HN. So. The design, the language of it was just, you know, stylish, 60s looking. Um, it, it, it's a really cool watch. Uh, beautifully elegant, but at a tool at the end of the day. They debuted this new affordable uh, Miyota movement, mm -hmm. GMT. I said in the video, I, it's not a coincidence that Seiko and Citizen at the same time. Oh, is this the, um, the, the 9075? Yeah, yeah, yeah. The yeah. Miyota? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. It, the, yeah. Okay, go ahead. Go it's on. not a coincidence. I, I don't believe in coincidences like that. Um, sure. So, you know, within a month of each other? Yeah. They're different, though. Miyota's definitely... Oh, of more, course. Of course. Right? Miyota's is a true GMT. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Seiko's is an office GMT, right? Right, yeah. right, right. Yeah, I think I just... I, I, I didn't say that, but I did say that the, the Citizen is a true GMT. Yeah, it is. Because true. I had it in my hand and I was looking at it. You, you were know, playing I, with it, right? I, I filmed it. So, sorry, excuse me. No, please. Oh, you know what? Hydration break. <laughs> I'm in the midst of designing some of those, by the way. Some urban gentry, yeah. So, it will happen. Stay tuned. Yeah. <laughs> I really would love to see the astronaut brought back. Um, obviously, they can't do it with this new electrostatic because it's like, you know, it's a big, Oh my big, god, that thing's a monster. Yeah, it is a monstrous thing, but um, why so not? So what were them? these? They were just straight GMT watches? I'm looking at a picture of one on Yeah, you? Yeah, they were GMT... Uh, oh, the new ones or the... Or the, the old, old, the old, old, old ones. Old. Yeah, it was basically a, a, um, like our space view, but with a... Okay. With a Got it. GMT, you know, bicolor bezel. So the movement itself was an Accutron movement? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Fitted with a GMT hand. Yeah. Oh, that's cool. I didn't actually did not know that yeah. they um, did stuff like that. So why not do it with the Miyota? Oh, okay, okay. You okay. know, that's what I'm saying. Right. They could. I, I think it would be a win-win. I, 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 you, you know, I love Bulova. We both do. Yeah. Uh, Bulova, sorry. sorry. It's Bulova. okay. I love it. The, the reason why I think I was harsh. Well, not harsh. It was because I care about the brand and I love right. the brand, and I right. want to Let's see, see them succeed. Yeah, succeed. they hit it out of the park with the mill ships. Right. Let's see. Let's, and if it has the Miyota, it will be affordable. Right. So you know, fingers crossed. Anyway. Yeah. Sorry, that sounded like a rant, but no, uh, it's okay. I'm, yeah. <laughs> that movement. I, I, I'm start, I'm trying to get my hands on that movement. It's uh, right. They, they are not opening it up to everybody yet. Yeah, so yeah, that was a premiere on, on the channel. So yeah, if you missed it, I'll cool. put a card here. So do check it out. Um, yeah, very, very cool stuff. Anyway. Okay, so I'm going to go to you. another. It's funny that, you know, it's... um. You said Bulova just now, because I'm doing a watch that Bulova actually already redid, but it's not a Bulova. Oh, okay. So Invicta <laughs> <laughs> made a surfboard chrono in the 70s. Now, ah, yeah, and like one of these the, right. brands that, we did a video where it was, um, I forgot what the title was. It was, this was like brands that were better before? Yeah, yeah. that was it, better yeah, before. Yeah. And I guess not many people know this, but Invi Invicta is actually a very storied and oh, yeah. well-respected yeah, yeah. Swiss brand before it was brought over, you know, namesake was brought over in the, in the early 90s yeah. uh, into what people know it as today. So Invicta put out this surfboard chrono 
which surfboard meaning that the, the two eye, the two registers are surrounded by, you know, an ellipse or an oval, um, and it kind of resembles a surfboard. They had this surfboard, 40 millimeter watch, which again is probably against most things that Invicta does nowadays. Mm -hmm. uh, it was powered by a Valjoux 7733. Mm -hmm. uh, like I said, it was somewhere in the 1970s that this came out. Um, and then Bulova came and Bulova had one also, but then they, they made their own reissue. And that's been around for years in, mm. in a court space. But I really think that it's such a cool looking watch. They did, they, Invicta did it in a cushion case. Mm. Um, and it just, you know, square hands, square markers, a little bit Daytona-ish markers. Uh, I thought it really, really looked really nice and i think this is a watch that they they could bring back in their current a very interesting thing for invicta you know modern invicta yeah. to bring back styles from the you know 50s 60s and 70s they did do a, a kind of like early submariner style diver that was yeah. very very like minimal and yes very un unlike invicta very un, very un invicta un invicta <laughs> Un Victor. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, they should start a sub brand. Un Victor. Un Victor. That would be cool. <laughs> Although no one would buy it. No. They're doing fine, though. They don't need my help. But uh, yeah. I think this would be something cool to bring back. Something that probably will never happen. But How did you find out about this watch? <sighs> I know surf. I, I, I like the surfboard chronos just as a style because uh -huh. they look pretty nifty. Yeah. And I was like, oh, look at that. Invicta did one. And sure enough, that like you said, you start going down the rabbit hole. Right. This rabbit hole wasn't very deep yeah. as well. It was a very shallow rabbit hole, uh, simple and elegant. Yeah, and I yeah. thought it was, and I thought it was such a, I guess a lot of things are like this, but it's such a, a dichotomy to what they are today. Yeah. That, yeah I thought yeah, it was yeah. really, wow, look, look where they've gone or come from. Right. Yeah. Well, that's a discussion we've had many a times we have we yeah. have it's funny how it's funny how it just re uh re yeah. issues itself actually i have to say they wow they've done some gorgeous classical really back in the i mean in the 1930s yes. yep gorgeous gorgeous stuff. and not only that it was um there was uh, technological innovations happening at that time mm. as well with them you know doing doing firsts and stuff so nice, pretty cool nice talking of first that's a kind of a good segue i'm going to talk about fortis um mm -hmm. i've talked about and I've reviewed a lot of the new ones, but I wanted to go back. Uh, actually, I'll send it to you. I'll send it to you right now. Hold on oh a boy. second. I'm going to go into my Through email. the miracle of modern technology. technology. Fortis are really, really old. Uh, uh, and actually, I have quite an interesting story. I brought the book in. This is their 100 year book, which came mm -hmm. out in 2012. So they're much older now. Arrival. Nice. What is that cat doing? <laughs> What the hell? What'd you send me? One of their firsts was a very early, okay, they did the, the first automatic watch with the British horologist, um, what was his name, Harwood. Mm -hmm. But another one of their first was a very early waterproof watch. Okay. And, oh. and they marketed it with this poster of a cat pushing over a, a glass like this. Sadly, not an official urban gentry glass. <laughs> What a shame. Missed opportunity you for missed you. Missed opportunity, yeah. Um, knocked over the glass and obviously the water fell on the watch and the, the watch is called Fortissimo. Fortissimo in Italian means very, very strong. Mm -hmm. um, and it, it actually Fortis, uh, the name Fortis comes from uh, these Roman candles. It's a very, very, very early horological time measuring device. Oh, interesting. Because S Switzerland was part of the empire. So right. um, they would find these in Switzerland and they, therefore uh, timing, you mm -hmm. put an amount of oil well, and you'd burn it and it'd show you how much time. When it's it. empty, it's got it. Exactly. So the, the, the brand is all kind of like got all these rich roots of, of firsts. Mm -hmm. um, and what I, what I wanted to do with this watch, it's, it's not that particular watch in the poster. It's very handsome, but it kind of looks like every other watch from that period. Right. It's just that I was thinking about Fortis, like they're doing really amazing stuff with the Stratoliner. I talked about it recently that they test their movements in space now by sending them up on a balloon and measuring and see how they deal with temperatures and all this kind of stuff. Got it. And you can actually buy a, a watch that's been tested in space. Amazing, cool. amazing stuff. But it's never going to get mainstream right. appeal. Right, attention. Yeah, yeah, sure. 
and because I love filters, but and I was thinking like, what kind of a watch would have a, a wider appeal? And, I, and then I was looking, and you can look in the the you can download the, for this free actually online. Mm -hmm. Oh, there's the there's the first automatic watch, the Harwood. There, a lot of their old stuff is just beautiful, really classic. You know, like even some of their older chronographs. Um, right. I I would love to see just something a bit more mainstream, not, they've gone in this tool-tastic, like... Right, Mars watch. Mars, and, going to yeah. Mars, you know, you yeah. can hit a bolt with it, you know, if you lose your hammer out in space and it's still it. work kind of thing. I love that, but I want to see something classic, something mainstream, something a little bit more, you know, that's not 40-something millimeters, 44, right. you know, some ridiculous yeah. thing. So it's not a particular watch, I just, it's a more of a discussion on the brand. Got yeah, it. Got yeah. it. Do you see what I mean? They should be. They should be doing something more that reaches a, a, a wider audience, if you will. Yeah, yeah, like yeah. Like a waterproof watch. That was something back in the day that was wow. This is cool. This yeah, will, this is this really will cool. appeal to a lot of people. Exactly. You know? Exactly. Right. Because uh, when actually I just remember what video it was in. It was the top nine or top ten or top seven or whatever it was. Of, of, uh, affordable alternatives to the, to the Speedmaster. Okay. And I, put, and I put filters at the top because it's like their real space going watches. Right, sure. And everyone in the comments always like, uh, nah, it, Speedmaster's so elegant. And that, that kind of like, yeah, you're right. Because a Speedmaster you can wear with anything. Yeah, it's not, it's not just a tool. It's a dress, a goop wear, yeah. It's so handsome and classically elegant. It, it's not that utilitarian thing. Um, right, yeah. When you see a, Ford, a modern day Fortis, you just think pilot's watch. Flight watch, yeah. space watch. It's a tank. Mm -hmm. The Speedmaster is a Cadillac. Right. I get it. Yes, it can be fast and it right. can be elegant. Right. Exactly. In the fifties, it. it was fast, but you yeah. put you put up a Speedmaster next to a space proven Fortis. It's, yes. It's like, you know, it's nothing. Totally different thing. You know. Right. Anyway. Excellent. Um. That's about it. <laughs> okay, well, I'll go to my last one. My last one's actually kind of interesting because I don't want to say it's a, it's not a manufactured watch per se, right? So Marlon Brando's Rolex oh, from wow. um, Apocalypse Now. Nice. And it's just interesting because I know a lot of people try to emulate the look of that watch. Yeah. Um, but Rolex never really made it. It was... So I didn't know the reference. So it was a GMT Master reference sixteen reference number sixteen seventy five. Uh -huh. um, though his watch actually sold at auction a few years ago for two million bucks. Mm. He engraved the back and stuff, did a whole bunch of things. Right. With it. So it's the actual watch that Brando wore in the movie, in the movie as his portrayal of uh, Colonel Kurtz. Colonel Kurtz. It's yeah. a nineteen seventy two watch. Caliber is fifteen seventy five for those that like to follow along. So, but. You know, I, I, obviously, you being a film buff, you know that the movie itself was plagued with lots of issues. Like, he came on set, he was overweight and all yeah, this other yeah, stuff. Yeah. They told him to remove his watch. They didn't want him to use that watch. I don't know if it was a sponsorship thing. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, hey, we can't do that. Or if it was, you know, that that's an elegant watch. You know, no one's going to believe that a guy, you know, deep in Vietnam is going to be wearing it. Right. So he refused and he nicked the bezel off. And just the Brando Rolex was born. Brando, I've seen people wow. take, you know, GMT watches and then they just want to put a smooth, they put a smooth bezel on, yeah. non-rotating. I've seen it, Seiko mods like that. Yeah, ex exactly. I actually sell the smooth bezel for the SKX. People enjoy it. Mm. Just a little bit about the watch, 40 millimeter GMT in manufacture from 59 to 80, had tritium paint. Right. But other than that, it's like Rolex, so they have smooth bezel, I guess, GMTs, right? Like the Explorer GMT. Mm -hmm. But the GMT Master was a, a purpose-built GMT watch built for pilots, built for Pan Am, you know, blah, blah, blah. But it was just such a, I guess, such a, a differing view when he flicked the bezel off that it kind of inspired a lot of people to do their own, I don't, hopefully people are not doing it to their own 40-year-old Rolexes, but yeah. I guess you never know. Um, but I think it spawned this whole movement of GMT watches without the rotating bezel because sometimes you just want a 24-hour hand and you don't need the external reference on it. Um, so I think maybe that would be a cool watch if Rolex wanted to 
not reissue a brand new Rolex, but make a GMT without the rotating bezel. Right. And it would be a cool thing for people to, uh, definitely, I mean, everybody would go after it, of course. Um, but you know, again, they don't need my help, but I think a cool watch that definitely would uh, turn heads. Do you think that that inspired the, the Explorer 2? It might have, because it definitely came out afterwards. Mm. Um, it may have, or it may have not. I don't know if the watch really had cult infatuation when, when did it back become, there, right? Yeah, when did it become like... Culty? Yeah, culty. I would say within the last 10 to 15 years. Yes, yeah, Because know, yeah. you know, he, he bequeathed it to his daughter, and then... You know, and then, and then she sold it at auction or whatever yeah. um, for a couple million bucks. So yeah, I, I, I would say only recently did people start tell you know asking me for how, how can I how can I get this watch you know get this watch yeah. for less kind of thing how can yeah. I get this? Um, so yeah, I just think that it's something cool that they could definitely um, benefit from. Have you seen the movie? No, you know me. I'm not really. A, oh my! I God. know about the movie. I right. know what the whole thing's about. I just. You know, obviously, it's from before my time. You've got to see it. It's it's I a, will. it's a masterpiece. Uh, Coppola yeah, is, is Martin a, Sheen. Yeah, Marlon I, Brando. Yeah. I mean, aside from the watches, I mean, it's just right. The Willard Two, right? Yeah, the Willard Two. It yeah. touches on so many things. I actually quite like the fact that he wore that. I think it added to his role because he's unconventional. He's a rebel. He's he's yes. going against the grain. Right. So I was reading something, and one in, in one of his interviews, or whatever. You know that he said, you know my my role, mm -hmm. this guy that I'm portraying, he would wear, you know, uh, however much it was back then, but nowadays ten thousand dollars. He yeah. would wear a ten thousand dollar watch, you know, deep in you know deep in the jungle. Yeah. You know yeah, he yeah. wouldn't give a sh. He would. Yeah. Excuse me. He would. <laughs> <laughs> I use a curse. Yeah. Without a camera, I mean, he wouldn't give a poop. <laughs> yeah, give a poop. So yeah. yeah. Yeah, so, yeah. Uh, I, 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 so you're right. It really, you know, personified him. I totally agree. And another thing is, uh, and I think I said this in a very, very, very early video uh, where I talked about this watch. It's the antithesis or the opposite, in many ways, of the uh, the Seiko. It's like because yes, uh, it know, absolutely is. Then the Willard. It's really yeah. it's it's uh, affordable. It's luxury. You know, it's a tool. It's not Rolex is not really a tool watch, and people don't really anymore yeah. anymore use yeah. it as tool watches. It's just a very um, yeah, you know, yeah. It's, it's personalities and watches. Yeah. yeah, I agree, and it reflects their characters, you know, the movie characters perfectly. I, I, I you can really ask for a better watch casting. So right, yeah, I guess so. Right, yeah. yeah, great choice, great choice. Thank you. Um, so how you can't really use the GMT function without the bezel though. So you can't, yeah, it depends, right? You can use it as a reference for yourself for 24 hour time when it points down, uh -huh. it's noon, when it points up, it's midnight. Right, and a very- It depends on what you're trying to use it for, really. Right, got it. I thought about that. And they could just reprint the dial if they wanted. They could put little 24 hour indications on the dial. That They could do that, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I, gave, I did give it thought. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> they could even, you know, they could etch the be non-rotating bezel, they could etch the bezel, like kind of explore or stuff, yeah, but yeah. Yeah, yeah, cool, cool, cool. Okay, I've got my last one. Um, Go. It's the, actually I've found the, there's so many great, this is a rabbit hole. This is an absolute rabbit hole. Love it's, rabbit holes. Um, so it's the Weems watch, the, the, the Longines from uh, World War II. It's named after PVH, and I've got written here, uh, Weems, who was an, a master naval, navigator uh he was an instructor uh, during the war he he uh, got it. uh was a commander i think uh convoy vessels and this kind of stuff uh but he was also helped uh lindbergh charles lindbergh it was like a consultant when he it, he designed his watch with longines and he came got up it. with this very very complicated I, I i can't even understand it makes my brain hurt but the the, the, the Longines Lindbergh watch has this bezel, it does all kinds of navigation, very, very complex, uh, kind Got of it. a bit like a Speedmaster. Uh, right. Sorry, uh, uh, like a Flymaster, like an E6 speed Ex slide roll. Yeah. Exactly. By the time World War II rolls around, there's the A10 mil spec watches. Basically, mm -hmm. all it is is an A10 mil spec watch that he decided to put a 60 minute rotating bezel. I think I'm looking at a sawtooth bezel. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I see it. And, and as much as it seems very, very simple. 
that didn't really exist at the time. And uh, it's a kind of progenitor for diving time bezels, for every right. other kind of bezel that times like a, like in yeah. that kind of manner. I kind of didn't really know about this. And, and Longines, you know, I, I, I just talked about Longines in a, in a video, a James Bond video. They are- Oh, you're uh, the criminal one. Yeah, villains, yeah, that's right, yeah. Villains, um, that was it. Longines, they're obviously nowhere near what they used to be. You know, they they, they used to be what Rolex wanted to be. Yeah, you know, yeah. they were mm -hmm. innovating, winning awards. They were they were leading the industry, right? Right. Um, their watches are beautiful now, but I as I it. as I said in that video, they're kind of more like the Moore watch. You know, they're yeah, they've come I like get that. It. So they're not. You know, they don't have that prestige that they did. I would love to see them bring this back. And they did in 1995. And I huh. believe it was a re-edition. They did it 36 millimeter perfect. I would do the same. Did a limited edition of 3000. Okay. And this was 1995. So this was a very different to the watch world that I had kind of got involved right. in now. And sure. your, your watch world. Sure. With that World War II history, with the, 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 the Wings uh, navigation history, the connection to Lindbergh. Right. What, a, what a watch to bring back now to, to kind of uh, reinvigorate so, that prestige. Is that a, um, a bezel lock on it? I think it is. It I mean, looks like it, right? Yeah. yeah, like, yeah. The, uh, like the Yema had. Yeah, yeah, exactly, exactly. Okay, I remember that. Yeah, yeah. Very See, I remember cool. our videos. Nice, <laughs> nice. The Weems bezel actually got, went into other watches too. So there was an there was an Amiga Weems watch. There was a this brand and that brand. Um, so it wasn't just Longines, but I think it was Longines right. first. And the 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 one in Dunkirk, the movie Dunkirk, that one has a bezel. For me, I love World War II history. Right. Uh, I love the aesthetic, the simplicity, the functionality of it. You know, I think if they did it uh, with an ETA and non non-limited edition, I think it would be a winner. You know, you yeah, having a look at it now? Number. I'm looking. I was looking, reading the dial, and then I couldn't. Find, what the hell does that say? It's so there's a patent on it. Right. The old one, U.S. patent number two million sixty-seven. Yeah, yeah. I was, yeah. Just, I was just looking. Yeah. I was like, what does that say? Private? No patent. Got it. Okay. Right. I don't know what the patent is. Maybe it's the bezel. I think it is. It's an amazing bit of... The, this Weems guy is fascinating. Uh, Lindbergh is fascinating. The whole, right. That whole era of Longines, you, you could... Maybe, maybe I'll do a video about it or something, but it's just... They really were the best of the best. Yeah, it's a patent for uh, apparatus for navigators timekeeping. Mm, yeah. Cool. Yeah, cool stuff. So that that's my cool. last pick. I just, Very good. I, yeah, it's just good. Oh, those blue hands. Please do blue. The hands. blue hands are nice. Well, on the white. Um, yeah. The white dial. Yeah, 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 yeah. And just, I love the simplicity of it. The numerals and the, oh, just please bring it back. I'll, I'll buy it. I'll review yeah. it. You know. You have one customer. Yeah, you'll have one customer. Here. Guys, nominate watches uh, you'd like to see brought back in the comments below. I'd love to hear, uh, especially why as well. Uh, also, welcome back to Mark. Thank you very, very much. <laughs> it wasn't gone that long. <laughs> yeah. No, it really did. It felt like ages. Um, yeah, I had people commenting on my videos. When's the monthly watch chat coming yeah, out? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm like, it's coming. We're filming tomorrow. Yeah. <laughs> nice. Thank you so much for sponsoring the production oh, of this Thank video. You. Really does help. Uh, guys, we will catch you hopefully next month. Um, you might come to Philly. I, I might, maybe. I might, yeah. Yeah, let's talk about it, let's talk about yeah, it. Yeah, sure. All right, cool. Don't forget to like this video, very important indeed, and we will catch you, fingers crossed, in the next one. <laughs> <laughs> Ciao. Thank you, bye.